The International Space Station, our most iconic space laboratory, is collapsing much faster than expected. Cracks are spreading, leaks are worsening, and the Russian modules are literally aging out of service. Yet inside, cutting-edge experiments, rare gear, decades of global cooperation. And we might deorbit it all within the next few years. Elon Musk thinks it's time to shut it down. NASA has a plan. SpaceX is preparing a Dragon variant to deorbit the station. But are we ready to lose everything on board just to move on? In today's Tech Map episode, we break down the latest ISS crisis, Musk's explosive statement, and what it means for the future of space stations and space science itself. Strap in. The space race is shifting gears, and this might be the last chapter of the ISS as we know it. Let's dive in. Axiom 4 is now scheduled no earlier than Thursday, June 19th, after getting delayed on June 12th, when NASA and Roscosmos continued to understand the most recent repair efforts to seal small leaks on the Russian side of the International Space Station. The leak happened because parts of the space station's metal structure, especially in the Russian section, have been getting weaker over time. This happens because the metal is bent and stressed again and again as the station orbits Earth. When metal is bent many times, it gets tired. This is called metal fatigue. Imagine bending a paperclip back and forth. At first, it's strong, but if you keep bending it, it gets stiff and eventually cracks and breaks. The same thing happens with the aluminum metal on the ISS, the metal it's made of. Tiny cracks start to form, and over time, these cracks get bigger until the metal can no longer hold the air inside, causing leaks. This process is called high cycle fatigue, meaning the metal has been bent and stressed many times, thousands or millions of times, making it weaker and more likely to crack suddenly without warning. Since the ISS has been in space for almost 30 years, this repeated bending and stress have caused more cracks and leaks than people first thought. So the leak is caused by the metal getting tired and cracked from bending and stress over a long time, just like a paper clip breaking after being bent too much. Additionally, space has no air to cushion things, and the temperature swings from super hot to super cold, which wears out materials faster. The gas leaks are located in the transfer tunnel, called PRK, a tunnel connecting the Russian Zvezda module to a docking port. Zvezda is one of the oldest components of the ISS complex, with the first components launched in 1998. The station has had a slow but growing leak since 2019. Russian cosmonauts have attempted to repair these small cracks, but they typically only slow the leak with gas loss of a few pounds per day. According to Axiom Space, as part of an ongoing investigation, NASA is was working with Roscosmos to understand a new pressure signature. Cosmonauts aboard the space station recently performed inspections of the pressurized module's interior surfaces, sealed some additional areas of interest, and measured the current leak rate. Following this effort, pressure in the transfer tunnel has been stable. The postponement of Axiom Mission 4 provides additional time for NASA and Roscosmos to evaluate the situation and determine whether any additional troubleshooting is necessary. Some people familiar with the situation are offering little information about the severity of the situation. However, on X, Casey Hanmer, a smart guy who knows a lot about space, raises the red warnings. As he said, there is no factor of safety associated with this failure mode. None of the structural pressure vessels are meant to crack. We are not even single fault tolerant on the structural integrity of the station. Normally, things like buildings or bridges are built with extra strength to handle problems. But the ISS wasn't designed to handle cracks, so if they get bad, it could be dangerous. He added, we could wake up tomorrow and find, with zero warning, that it has failed catastrophically. Whether that means a leak slow enough to close some hatches, get the crew out or at least into safer parts of the station, is a roll of the dice. It could also depressurize in less than a minute. Well, if the cracks get too big, 
air could leak out fast. This might give the astronauts only a minute to close doors and get to safety. Or it could be even worse if they can't fix it in time. So right now it's basically a race against time to see whether NASA and Roscosmos can fix the issues. Or if the Russian segment of the space station might have to be shut down entirely. There's been a lot of chatter online with some people thinking they could patch up the cracks or replace the damaged parts. And of course, the internet being the internet, some folks joked about slapping on some flex tape. You know, that super strong stuff from the TV commercials. But let's be real, that's definitely not a serious solution. If the damage turns out to be too severe, the only real option might be to seal off the Russian module, or in a worst case scenario, shut down the entire ISS. The station's getting pretty old and worn out anyway. And with the rising tensions between the US and Russia, it's hard to see the ISS as the shining symbol of global cooperation it once was. SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, seems to echo my thoughts in a recent tweet. There are potentially serious concerns about the long-term safety of the space station. Some parts of it are simply getting too old, and obviously that risk grows over time. Even though SpaceX earns billions of dollars from transporting astronauts and cargo to the ISS, I nonetheless would like to go on record recommending that it be deorbited within two years. This isn't the first time Musk has raised alarms about deorbiting the ISS. So why the urgency? For starters, safety is a major concern. The station is aging, and with every passing year, the risks only grow. Then there's the money. Running the ISS costs around $3 to $4 billion per year, a hefty sum even for a spacefaring nation. Musk likely sees this as an unsustainable burn rate. Pulling the plug early could free up billions for SpaceX's bigger ambitions, like building a permanent presence on Mars, a goal that's been central to his vision from day one. Now, even though SpaceX makes a fortune ferrying people and supplies to the ISS, Musk's readiness to walk away from that revenue shows he's thinking long-term. He's betting that building new, next-gen space infrastructure will pay off far more than clinging to an aging orbiting lab. By ending ISS involvement, SpaceX can reinvest its over $10 billion yearly revenue, previously split between ISS work and other projects, into pioneering ventures. But it's not just about hardware or dollars, it's political too. The ISS is a joint effort between NASA, Roscosmos, ESA, JAXA, and CSA. Yet with tensions flaring, especially after Russia's actions in Ukraine and recent mystery leaks on the station, the alliance is showing cracks. Musk may simply want to end the dependence and move on. Russia, for its part, is already planning its own independent orbital station, targeting a 2027 launch for the first module and full completion by 2033. And then there's the bigger picture. SpaceX in 2024 secured an $843 million NASA contract to build a Dragon variant, which is capable of safely deorbiting the ISS. For Musk, this isn't just a job, it's a chance to lead the shift toward privately operated stations. His stance on scrapping the ISS reflects a clear belief. It's better to start fresh with modern Starship-based solutions than try to patch up the past. Ultimately, it all ties back to Musk's core dream, settling Mars. The ISS, while valuable, diverts time, talent, and money from that mission. Taking it down sooner rather than later helps clear the way for faster progress on Starship, lunar missions, and beyond. So what does NASA think about Musk's viewpoint? In an official statement, NASA said, in the future, the United States plans to transition its operations in low Earth orbit to commercially owned and operated destinations to ensure continued access to essential research and technology development. At the conclusion of the International Space Station program, the station will be deorbited in a controlled manner to ensure avoidance of populated areas on Earth. The station's safe deorbit is the shared responsibility of the five space agencies. As of now, there's no sign that NASA plans to walk back its commitment to keep the ISS running until 2030. Of course, deorbiting the ISS doesn't look like a walk in the park. Let's be real, 
This is a tightrope walk. The commercial space stations like Axiom Station and Blue Origin's Orbital Reef are getting delayed. Starship needs tweaks. And coordinating with global partners is a headache. The ISS has gear and experiments worth salvaging. Are we ready to lose that? And what if Starship's not up to snuff by 2027? Elon's known for tight deadlines. Think Falcon 9's rapid rise. But this is next level. Fans on X are split. Some love the boldness, others say it's reckless. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, if you love this deep dive, smash that like button. Hit subscribe and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more. And let's keep exploring the cosmos together. Looking ahead, Elon's dreaming big. His X posts suggest a SpaceX built successor. Maybe a spinning habitat or a lunar gateway. Starship, with its demonstrated cargo capacity, could transport lab modules or crew to temporary orbital platforms or lunar gateways, maintaining scientific continuity. This aligns with SpaceX's roadmap, which includes lunar Starship missions as early as mid 2027. Fans even threw in fifth element cruise ship vibes. With NASA's deorbit contract and Starship's potential, SpaceX could lead the post ISS era. But it's a gamble. Success means a new space age. Failure could leave us grounded. Either way, it's a wild ride. All right, space cadets, that's the scoop. Elon Musk is pushing to deorbit the ISS by 2027 with SpaceX leading the charge. Love it or hate it, it's a game changer. So, what's your take? Do you prefer this idea? Again, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. The space station was officially given approval by President Reagan, and a budget was approved by the U.S. Congress in 1984. NASA Administrator James Beggs sought international partners, including Canada, Japan, and the European Space Agency, ESA. The station design phase lasted from 1984 to 1993. Construction of elements began in the late 1980s across the US, Canada, Japan, and Europe. By 1993, Russia was invited to join during a redesign phase. Agreement to proceed in two phases. Phase 1, NASA Mir, 1995 to 1998. Shuttle missions docked with the Russian Mir station. The U.S. helped modify Russian modules, Spectre, and Priroda to house U.S. experiments and astronauts. Phase 2, from 1998. Launch and assembly of the new ISS with contributions from all partners. 